Hi booktube, Lynette here and today I am wearing my Hogwarts jumper uh, with all the lovely house symbols on the side in honour of the fact that I am going to do a Harry Potter themed book tag. Yes, I am a Harry Potter obsessive uh, as you can tell from all the books and the Funko Pops, uh, more books this side. Um, everybody in my um, personal life knows just how obsessed I am with Harry Potter. Uh, so I get given lots of gifts related to Harry Potter so it's only fitting that one of my videos for booktube should be related to Harry Potter in some way and I have decided to do the Harry Potter spells tag so without further ado let's get on with the questions question number one a childhood favourite that is connected to good memories and I've picked The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis I fell in love with this book as an eight-year-old um, and also at the same time there was a BBC TV adaptation made of it which on a Sunday evening um, myself, my mum, my brother and my sister we would sit down around the TV on a Sunday have something nice for our evening meal and watch um, the episodes so it reminds me of family times and it just reminds me of being a child and discovering fantasy and loving and um, not knowing that I was discovering fantasy at that time um, but absolutely enjoying this story and the, the set of stories that I would then went on to discover and read after that. Question number two is Expelliarmus, a book that surprised you and for this book I have picked The Listeners by Christopher Pike. When I first bought this book uh, back in the mid to late 90s um, it was a complete and absolute cover buy I saw this cover and I absolutely thought I have to have that book I need to know what it's about and I picked it up and when I read what it was about after I'd bought it I was kind of like I'm not really sure because it was about an FBI agent um, kind of investigating a cult uh, in America and what happens to him and to that cult after that and I was kind of like I'm not really sure um, if it's for me but the cover kind of gave me the idea that there was something supernatural about it and when I read it I absolutely loved it there's hardly any of the supernatural in it that's right at the very very end of uh, the book um, and most of the story is actually going back over the main character's career with the FBI and his history so I was really surprised because I got drawn in by that and it's a book that I've read I'd read over and over um for a while um I didn't have an actual copy of it this is a second hand copy that I've picked up recently um so yes I I it did surprise me because although at that stage I'd read quite a lot of um Stephen King and I was getting into Dean Koontz so the horror thriller um, with kind of fantastical elements I was on board with um, I wasn't expecting it from this book and it really did surprise me question number three priori incantatum talk about the last book that you read the last book that I finished at this point in time is reunion in death by JD Robb uh, this is um, a book I think it's book 13 of no book 14 actually of her in death series uh, this is a series that I've been reading one book a month for the last 14 months um to to try and catch up with the series because it is a mahusive series at this point it's going to take me reading one book a month it's going to take me until 2024 to catch up um but the reunion in death is about Eve Dallas who's a police detective and her husband Rourke, um, someone who Eve had previously had convicted for murder, has been released early and starts killing again and specifically is killing to try and get Eve um, on board and to try and prove that she is better than Eve and, and better than Eve was and is. And the story goes from there. Really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to book 15 in the series when I get to read that next month. Question number four, Alohomora, a book that introduced you to a genre that you'd never really heard of or, or read much from before. And I've picked Her Dark Angel by Felicity Heaton. This is one of the earliest books that I remember reading when I started exploring ebooks. 
and it introduced me to romance novels. Now, I'd read romance novels in the past. I'd read my mum's Jilly Coopers and um, I can't remember her other, her other, but she'd, she'd had other romance authors on her bookshelves and I'd read those as a teenager, not really got on with them. Um, they were just there and they were adult books and I could access them and I wanted to read uh, adult books at that point. But this is the book that introduced me to romance novels with quite a large amount of sex in them. And I really enjoyed it. And I went on to research Felicity Heaton and find out what other books she'd read. And I quickly devoured everything that she had out there at that point. Um, and she is an author to this day whose books I continue to enjoy reading and that I look forward to picking up when I do come across them. And... I'm really glad because it, it actually, at the same time I, that I was reading this one, I was then coming across the, the Fifty Shades of Grey. So that phenomenon uh, was happening. And I liked Fifty Shades of Grey at that point. Um, but there was something missing. And Felicity Heaton was one of those writers who showed me that those books are out there and they are actually quite good. Um, so... I'm really glad that I persevered and I found other books um, because then for the next nine, ten years, they became a, pretty much a staple of my reading. Um, and I'm, I'm really grateful to discovering Felicity Heaton for that. Question number five is Ridiculous, a funny book that you have read. And I'm going to list, um, I'm going to recommend an entire series here, and that is the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett. I discovered Discworld back in late 2003. Um, I went to stay with friends who were living in Cornwall at that point, and in their spare room they had Terry Pratchett books on the shelf. Uh, specifically, it was the wife who was the Terry Pratchett reader, is still the Terry Pratchett reader. And she let me borrow um, the book while I was there, or I picked one of them up, um, and she let me borrow it while I was there, and thus began my love affair with Terry Pratchett. And many thanks to my friend for that. Um, I really do uh, still enjoy it. But he's just, I just love the way he comically takes the Michael out of our world and culture and what we do as humans. And the way, but at the same time, it can also make you think about the way that you're acting and behaving and, and, and the world that we live in and, you know, consumerism and racism. And there's there are all elements of that in there. Um, but he does it in a way that you don't realise you're thinking about it because you're just too busy laughing at the characters in the first place because they get themselves into such silly scrapes sometimes or just ridiculous things that they come out with. So if you've never read Terry Pratchett before and you like a bit of surrealist um, fiction, then definitely check him out. I, I highly recommend his work. Question number six, Sonorous, a book that you think everyone should know about. Now, I have a couple, um, but the one that actually genuinely springs to mind first is Where the Core Dads Sing by Delia Owens. I don't actually have my copy at the moment because my mum is reading it. So I'll um, I'll do what I normally do and put uh, the cover up in the corner here. But I read this book in December last year. Uh, this book was completely not in my comfort zone. It's not the sort of book that I go for. Yes, it does have a mystery element in it. Yes, it is a coming of age book, but it's the more literary of, of the side of the genres rather than what I would normally head towards. I picked it up because I'd heard a couple of other booktubers and Instagrammers, specifically Jess at Jess McGlynn, um, and uh, I forget her first name. There's a couple of others, um, but we were on a reading retreat and uh, they were all absolutely gushing about this book and it, the the name of the book just stuck with me it was just one of those books that I heard someone talking about and it just stuck with me and I had to to know for myself what was it about why was it so good what was it they absolutely loved about it um so that's why I picked it up it's about Kaya um we start with the book when she is very very young and her mum walks out on the family it then follows a second timeline um, when a young man in the future is murdered and it's the 
uh, investigation into that murder and uh, towards the end of the book then the trial of the person that they decide is responsible and it's in a way it's about uh, racism or not so much racism but it's about uh, how we discriminate people because of their backgrounds um, it's also um, about coming of age love um, learning and I I thoroughly enjoyed it 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 was a book that made me think it's a very slow going book so if it's not your normal style of book just all I can recommend is just keep reading if you're reading it just keep reading um because by the by the last third of the book I was absolutely hooked and I couldn't put it down and I actually did stay up until the early hours of the morning to finish it and the next day I handed it to my mum and said here you must read this book um so absolutely recommend that one if you haven't heard of it um and if you you know want to discover that maybe something that's not quite in your normal range of reading question number seven is obliviate or a spoiler that you would rather forget and i'm not going to say which book series it is but there is a book series that i have started and through watching youtube i have seen a spoiler for a death and then a further spoiler that that death is false and i'm a little bit annoyed about it because it's going to ruin that part of the story for me when I get to it because I haven't got to that yet um I'm a few books away from that I think so yes uh I yeah I, I want to forget about that I'm hoping that I'm re leaving so long between books that I'm hoping that I forget about it between now and then um but yes thanks YouTube that was excellent there was a distinct lack of spoiler warnings on that video um and yeah I just lesson to everyone please if you're going to um put a spoiler out there put it up and um, put spoilers all across the screen you know just just let people know that what they're about to hear is going to ruin something if they haven't already read it that's all we ask question number seven is imperio a book you had to read for school the only one i can remember reading is the pearl by john steinbeck and i think i had to read it for gcse um which is the 16 year old uh, exams that we do um here in the uk i don't really remember a lot about it um other than i was bored i was frustrated the teacher wouldn't let me read ahead uh i had an english teacher who although was very understanding about the fact that i was reader could not understand that i could not read at the class's pace um I was quite unlucky and I think that didn't help because I think if I'd been able to read it at my own pace I could have gone back over it with the class and finished it and maybe had a bit of a better understanding of it by the end and especially as it was for my exams um so I I was disappointed in that and yes um no it didn't it didn't work for me that one um and it was a real shame because I did have in my first couple of years at secondary school um i actually switched schools part way through and the very first english teacher i had in secondary school she cottoned on very very quickly that i was a reader and that i loved to read and that um making me read at the class's pace was holding me back and she did make a real effort of when we were doing class reading to let me know that it was okay to read ahead but i had to try and find keep pace with where the um rest of the class were so that if for any reason I was randomly called on to read out loud, then I would know and it wouldn't be so embarrassing for me or for her um, to get me to go back to the beginning. And she was really good at that. And, and before class, if she knew she was going to want me to read during that day, she would say to me before class, you need to keep pace with the class today. This is where we're starting from. I'm going to call on you to read out at some point. And that really, really helped. So I think having the teacher that I had when I read The Pearl not be so understanding unfortunately made made it less enjoyable for me at that point. Question number nine is Crucio a book that was painful to read? I can't really think of any. Um, I'm quite good at putting books down if um, they're painful to read. I don't tend to keep on with them. I tend I do tend to kind of like move on put them down say right that book isn't for me and and move on to something else um 
so I can't really think of anything that's painful to read. Uh, I did struggle. I tried to read David Copperfield last year. I did struggle with, I think maybe I struggled with the language a little bit. How I read it as a 10 year old, I have no idea. Um, but I managed it when I was 10. Um, as a 41 year old, I really can't do it. Um, so that's, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head in recent years. I have books that, for whatever reason, I just don't get into, but I've gone back to them and I've been able to read them. I am a mood reader, so sometimes a book being painful to read isn't that the, there's an issue with the book or that I'm not enjoying it. It's just that it's not the book I should be reading at that point in time because of how I'm feeling. So, yeah, I do. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head for that one. So, um, sorry, just, just go with your own. And question 10, the final question is... Avada Kedavra, a book that could kill. Now, I do have the hardback versions of, uh, wrong way, of Harry Potter here. They're quite chunky. They could definitely kill. Um, back here, I've got the illustrated editions, which are quite chunky and could kill. Um, I also have some quite thick, heavy books in this series. Uh, just go off screen there for a second. Um, I've got this one, Memory of Light by Robert Jordan. Um, it's quite a chunky paperback. You could use that as a weapon. Um, it's over a thousand pages, so it could definitely. Other than that, I guess if I bash someone over the head hard enough with my Kindle, which has over a thousand books on it, I could probably do someone some damage with that one. Whether it kill them or not. Hmm. Is there anyone I could try it out on, do you think? I'll let you know. So that was the Harry Potter spells tag. Um, I'll leave all the questions down below in the information box so that if you want to have a go at this tag yourself, then by all means, please do. I tag you all. And if you've liked this video, then please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And I will see you all again in another video soon. Bye.